Okay, so now let's move on to the discussion of the convexity of this loss function because we are going to use uh, different algorithms to minimize the loss function. And so we want to make sure that uh, it is convex and so the solution that we got is, is a global minima. Uh, so the, the convexity of this logistic uh, training loss function, also the uh, cross entropy loss function, can be seen by using the law of expression that I've just derived. Okay, so this is the uh, uh, cross entropy loss uh, written in the previous form. And the immediate thing you realize is that this term, okay, is just theta transpose xn because of the uh, the thing that we just derived. Okay, so this is linear. So the first term is linear. And by definition, it is convex. So as long as we can prove that the second term is also convex, then we are pretty much done. We, we, ha we have shown that the loss function j is convex. So how do we do that? Well, we can take the derivative of this guy, do it twice, then you can look at the Hessian matrix and see if it is positive semi-definite. And so the derivation goes as follows. You, you look at the gradient of this term, and then the gradient will have all these interesting steps, which of course no one would be interested in looking at that. So we, let's go to the bottom. All right, so, so at the bottom, you can go to all the way here, you get to this form. Okay, so again, I'm skipping a lot of these calculations. So you take the gradient of your uh, loss function, which is the second term here, okay, and then you, you do all these calculations, and you'll find that it is h x times x. Okay, it's not too complicated, it's, it's your uh, a logistic function times uh, the data point. Okay, so that is the gradient with a lot of derivations. Uh, then what? Well, that's not enough, okay, uh, to show anything useful. You, you also want to show that the Hessian is, uh, is positive semi-definite. Otherwise, you haven't shown that the function is convex, right? So, uh, so we also want to calculate the Hessian. Now, to calculate the Hessian, you take the derivative of this guy again. Now, this is the first order derivative. Okay, so here is the, uh, uh, this thing is here. Okay, so this is the uh, uh, first, first order gradient. So you look at the uh, gradient, and then uh, you take the second order gradient. Again, I'm skipping a lot of steps, which are very entertaining. Then we go to the bottom. Okay, assuming that my derivations are all correct. Then you go to the bottom. Okay, now what we want to show, we want to show that the Hessian is positive semi-definite. And when you go to here, can we conclude that? Well, we can conclude that because uh, this guy is always between 0 and 1. No matter what x I give you, no matter what, x, what theta it takes, it's always between 0 and 1. The second guy is always between 0 and 1. Okay? And then the third term is x, trans, x, x transpose. x, x transpose. Is this matrix positive semi-definite? Uh, yes. Why? Well, because you put any vector here, you put any vector there, okay, that will give you a v transpose x, a uh, 2 norm square. This is always bigger than zero. Okay, so you can show that this, the, the, this, this matrix, this matrix is, is positive semi-definite. Uh, this result is summarized in the next slide, where we show that for any vector v in the d dimension, assuming that this Hessian matrix is giving you a d by d matrix. Uh, then you take the v transpose, you have a v here, you plug it in, uh, then you can get uh, this expression. So you can, this is just a scalar because you're putting a data point into the logistic function, you evaluate a number. That number is between zero and one. And then you get this uh, a, 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 a two num square out of that inner product, so because you have two of them. And this is um, positive um, uh, semi-definite. So you show that the Hessian is positive semi-definite, and therefore, the first term is linear, the second term is positive semi-definite, and therefore, the entire function, this entire function, uh, is, is convex. Okay, and therefore, you can use a convex optimization algorithm to solve this problem. One more last thing to, uh, to notice, uh, in this, uh, uh, convex optimization is that you're welcome to write your gradient descent algorithm. But if you want to use uh, packages like CVX to, to make sure that your 
your problem formulation is correct, you don't want to deal with your, your optimization algorithm, then you may want to uh, f uh, follow the standard syntax of the CVX package. And by standard syntax, I mean that in CVX, there is a, um, there is a command called a log sum exponential. Okay, so you want to write your function into this log sum exponential, uh, expression before you can use your CVX program to, to calculate the global minimum for you. Uh, this log sum exponential test this form, it will be log and then sum, so you have a sum of, uh, two exponential functions. In our case, it would be this, okay? It would be uh, one plus e to the power something. And now, what, what, how do we uh, turn our uh, logistic regression into this form? Uh, you, you just move the terms around, okay? So move the terms around. So this is your logistic regression in the uh, log odd form. So you have a linear term, and then you have this log of one minus h term. Uh, you plug in your your sigmoid function as this uh, uh, e to the power something something. You put it in. Uh, then you evaluate this uh, log function by doing some simplifications uh, to this term. Then you can show that uh, this uh, loss function j can be written as this minus of some number transpose your parameter minus uh, this uh, a sum of the log of one plus e to the power something. Okay. Now once I can write it in this way then CVX will be very happy because uh, it is in the form that it likes. Uh, what is the form? You have a linear function here, and then you have a, a log sum exponential there. So you can just literally type uh, this quantity. So first of all, you calculate this quantity, and then you type it into your uh, CVX program. You say that this number transpose theta minus uh, uh, what do we call it, sum, okay, first of all, you need to sum them, and it will be log sum exponential, you just type that, and then you put different parameters in, and then you dump it into the CVX program, click a button, you get a solution, okay, it won't complain, okay. Uh, then you, you, you can, you can fit the data points. Uh, otherwise, otherwise, what you need to do is to write your own stochastic gradient descent or gradient descent. It's a very fun exercise, but, uh, without proper managing, management of your program, uh, you can have bugs in the algorithm itself. And spending a day there, you're still not able to, to look at the data. Okay. You're still struggling with the programming. So this CVX will give you a tool to, to analyze the logistic regression, look at the data to see if it has certain properties that you're missing. Okay. Um, <clears throat> okay. So if you try to fit the data, this is uh, what you will be expected uh, to get. Okay. So, um, first of all, what I'm doing here is that I first start with a true, uh, logistic, um, uh, model. I start with a red line. Okay. So I first create my red line. I first define my logistic function with different, uh, with a, with a proper, uh, uh, W and, and also W0. So I first define that. And then I draw samples. I draw my circles according to that distribution. The reason I can do that is because the, 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 the likelihood perspective, because the, uh, logistic regression, that function is indeed the posterior probability of getting that sample. So I can draw from that distribution. That will give me all the blue circles. And then I plug all these numbers, uh, by numbers I mean that these training samples into this form and I dump it into CVX instead of writing my own, uh, uh, gradient descent algorithm, which always crash. Okay, so I tell me there, and then I get a solution. The red, the, the, the black line is the line that I, I am obtained out from the uh, CVX program. Uh, so the CVX program will give you the solution. The solution will be in terms of theta. So the theta will contain your, your W. It will also contain the, the, the Y intercept. Okay. Uh, and so, uh, you can try to do the same exercise at home. Okay. It's fairly straightforward. Define your, your own true function. They draw samples and try to feed that. You can compare this, this plot with a linear regression model. And you can try to see that which one is more useful, uh, uh trying to fit the data. Okay. That, that will give you a lot more insight into the difference and similarities between linear and logistic regression. Okay. So try to do this exercise at home. It's fairly easy to program a couple lines in Python or MATLAB. Okay. Uh, this is the, uh, reading list for today. Uh, there are two perspectives. One is from the machine learning perspective. Uh, that is more closer to us. 
if you really like the statistics perspective, you can read these two uh, online lectures. Okay, so I will see you guys next time.